Weapons were scanned to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are back. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to hear energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. For now, it's gone completely. Engage. Hello, and welcome to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I am your host, David, and joining me this week we have Stuart the News Guy, Scarecrow the Crazy Guy, Hello. and a special guest, Devon the Other Guy. <laughs> <laughs> Wow. So, yeah. There I'll... goes the podcast already. We're not even 30 seconds in. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, this week we've only really got one main topic because the news doesn't count. So, bye bye. Oh, hey. Wow. <laughs> I'm out for the night. Bye. Yeah, and still it's under the bus and it's not a minute and a half. We're off to <laughs> setting records tonight. Um,. And the main topic this week is top five sci-fi series or web series. So, <laughs> so, yeah, so, um, basically, it's just going to be the same as what we did a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I will choose one of my cohorts at random, and they will say what their that number on their list is. So, let's see. Let's start with Stuart. Alright. My number five. I had to change it because I couldn't remember my old one. Uh, my number you. five, I will go with Voltron. What? Oh, oh Voltron. Feels. <laughs> I love Voltron. Which version? The, the, the very, like, not the lion version, like the original old version. And uh, any like, anyone who... Uh, yeah. Just wanted to say before I forget to say it again. Anyone who is in the chat room who wants to pipe in, I am constantly monitoring it. So if you have a number five that you want to get out there, just go right ahead and punch it up and I'll read it out on the air for you. So. But, yeah, I'm going very old school. I'm going old school Voltron. I love... I, I still, to this day, love old school Voltron. Um, it's actually the, really cool. Because the funny thing is... There's been three versions of old school Voltron. Yeah, I know. Old school, then the then the abortive three D version, Voltron in the Third Dimension. Yeah. Which was an interesting premise until they started just random, no limited explanation, just randomly transforming the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. Then yeah, there no, was no. the recent anime remake of it. Yeah. Yeah, which no, I was I, pretty good. Yeah, it wasn't too bad actually. But the improvements they See, made to the start to the startup systems from the old keys to the vault comms, I loved. See, it, that only really vault one only really makes me ask one question though. Who would win, Voltron or the Megazord? <laughs> Specifically, the Megazord with the Dragon Zord upgrade on top of the Brachiosaurus, so it's that like penultimate power. In other words, the Ultra Zord. Yeah, yeah the, that's, the, no, that's easy. The answer is Ultimus Prime. <laughs> oh, I was, uh, <laughs> chocolate soldiers for that one. So. <laughs> See, I'm a, yeah. I'm a '90s kid, so I've never actually heard of uh, Voltron. I actually had to look it up on Wikipedia just to see what it is. <laughs> oh, so, so yeah, Voltron I, I, is effectively oh. Power Rangers before there was Power Rangers, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, that's, that's what it looks like from what I'm yeah, seeing Voltron here. Yeah, Voltron started in the '80s, early '80s. I think it was yeah, '81, very '82. Early 80s. No. Yeah. But um, I love it. It's actually really awesome because ABC3 actually show it on the weekends. Wow. I find it sad that you know that. I just, just needed yeah, to get so that out there. something when we're not at Banff. Yeah, that's a fair point. Me, I just well, play you, Minecraft, so that's sad well, in its you're, own right. You're surprised I know old school <laughs> anime? Please. All right, I well, spent hours upon hours watching old stuff. Alright, let's I move on to uh, my number five, Firefly. Now, a lot of people normally have Fire Fire higher up the list, but to be honest, I don't think it's the best thing ever. Um, which is sort of nerd suicide, but... Uh, 
So, yeah, anyway, my number five is Firefly. I'd have to kind of agree with that. I mean, it was it was a good show for what it was. Um, I wasn't really as uh, thrilled with the movie Serenity as I was the actual show Firefly. Well, see, I was the other um, way around. I actually watched Serenity before Firefly. So... Well, see, yeah. see I watched Firefly first, so... Yeah. So, yeah. Um, uh, that leaves... Devin's number five. Go. Okay, my number five is something that I'm pretty sure everybody's watched, uh, which would be Star Wars: The Clone Wars. Yes, that was that was on the list, and then I remembered Battlestar Galactica, and I was like, "Yeah, bye bye Star Wars." <laughs> <laughs> Personally, Clone Wars to me started to feel an awful lot like Dragon Ball Z. Yeah, it did sort of drag a bit, where it would it, take it, almost it, ten it, episodes it, to it, throw a single punch. Yeah, it did drag a bit. But overall, in my opinion, it was a good series. Yeah. It wasn't a great series, that's why it's only at my number five. But yeah. I, the Clone Wars era for Star Wars was my favorite era, so it'll always have a little special spot in my heart. Yeah. So Amy says her number five is Transformers. I'm assuming she oh, means Gen 1, 1 Transformers, because there is no other Transformers. I'll let her confirm, <laughs> I'll let her confirm that in chat. At least, um, at least nothing by Michael Bay. Yeah, nothing, nothing by Michael Bay. It, Michael Bay made, yeah. is Michael Bay is to Transformers what J.J. Abrams is to Star Trek. Uh, <laughs> no, Stuart, you are not making the Jar Jar quote tonight. Yes. Anyway, I, she could have meant um, the newer uh, animated Transformers. I forget There's what it been was enough called. Enough of them around. No, it's, There's it's, been so many. Around. Yeah, she says she says the older one. So we'll go with the the, the Gen One stuff. Okay, that leaves the last person who hasn't had their number five said yet is Mr. Scarecrow. Uh, I do have to apologise in advance. My list is apparently going to be insanely anime heavy tonight. Yeah, well, that's what I get for having two anime nerds on the show. <laughs> All right, my number five. <laughs> one, one of my two actual Ex real shows, Space Above and Beyond. Yeah. I've never heard of it. Space Above and Beyond was it was no sort one of like knows it really. It's, yeah. It was almost it's, like the Firefly of its day, wasn't it? It was. Sort it of, had so much potential. And it was chopped and off in the got, kneecaps early on. It got uh, no, it uh, made it through its full series, through its full first yeah. series season, and they left it on a massive cliffhanger ex with the script and everything for to continue on in the next season. And they got dropped. That's what I meant with by chopped crew, off at the knees. Falling into atmosphere in a cargo pod. Yeah, that's what I meant that's by chopped it, off at the knees. That's so, where it yeah. leaves off. It's probably one of the best cliffhangers in history. Hmm. Yeah. Okay, so it's time to move on to number fours, I guess. Um, so number four. Yeah. Number four. <laughs> Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll get around to a soundboard, really. KOTOR. I could be... So, Knight, uh, Knights of the Old Republic is what I'm assuming is what KOTOR is. You, you can't have KOTOR. That's, that's a it's video a game, game. Not a TV <laughs> show. It's a series. I don't care if there's a story to it. It's a video game for the Xbox and PC. Exactly. Knights of the Old Republic 1, Knights of the Old Republic 2, and then to finish it off, there was Star... Uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, yeah. which is really, which was really awesome. Yeah. But yeah. still, yeah. All right. Anyway, so number fours. Let's start with Devin. Okay, um, my number four, and I'm probably gonna get a lot of shit for this, or crap for this. Sorry. Um, my number four is Star Trek Enterprise. Enterprise. Yeah. That I can yes, Enterprise. I can agree with. That yeah. was a pretty good show. Yeah. It did not deserve the crap it copped. Yeah, right up to the... Oh, I totally oh, agree. No, season one was okay. Season two was meh. Season three was actually really good. I felt... Come season three, it really found its stride. And then season four, it was... it Yeah, it, it was it was definitely sort of... I still think season three is probably the best. But yeah. Um, I did really admit, enjoy Season one, Enterprise. they were finding their way. Yeah. They really were fresh out no idea what technology they should be using or anything like that they were literally fumbling in the dark yeah no shields minimal warp capability 
I mean, for Christ's sake, the primary armor system was polarized hull plates. Yeah, which was effective. Yeah, everyone else is flying around with with energy shields. It's like, yeah. hello, underdog. Yeah. And yeah. so when I watched um, my, my first real introduction to Star Trek was actually JJ's Trek. And I walked away from that go- and sort of thought, okay, maybe Star Trek isn't as campy as I'd sort of been, as I thought it was. You know, everyone thinks Star Trek's pretty campy. So I said, screw yeah. it, I'm going to watch this thing in chronological order. Not the order it was made, but the order the story takes place. So my first so thing watch. I watched was Enterprise. And then the original series. And then and the so original on. series, yeah. The, trust me, the talk, if you want the definition of culture shock, watch Enterprise, then original series. <laughs> Oh, God. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's... there is culture shock. Oh, <laughs> yeah. So, so, Amy says, Infinite Reeves? Reeve... Infinite Reeves. Yeah, that. <laughs> Anime series, it's actually really, really interesting and good. For it. for it. It never really got the airtime it does deserve. It's basic... Uh, basic plot behind it is you've got a school full of kids learning to become space pilots or spaceship crew problem is something goes horribly wrong on the station they're in and they're forced to basically jettison in this old derelict ship that's been attached to the sh- station for god knows how long who is no one bothered to tell them the damn thing's actually sentient and wants to help them fair enough uh... Yeah, yeah, it does. I'll have to definitely have to check that out. Um, let's see. Mm, who hasn't done their number four yet? Me. Okay. Me. Okay, so let's go with... Scarecrow. Actually, yeah, Scarecrow. This one is not going to come as a shock to anyone. Space Battleship Yamato. Original or new one? Both. You have to choose one. Ha ha. That's the thing. You really, really can't because they are pretty much the same thing except the 2199 one has been slightly revisioned to be less sexist. Yeah, fair enough. Here I am trying to put it under the same. I've never actually seen Space Battleship Yamato but I have a I have a friend who's pretty big into it. If you Um, want to try and find it without having to deal with the subtitles and the hardness and in the original form at least and the difficulty of finding the damn thing you can pretty much find it by looking up Star Blazers in any DVD store hmm cool good yeah. I don't know because that was the name that the uh, that the English dub version got yeah. and I have to admit having watched both variants it's one of the few English dubs where they actually got the bloody thing right yeah mm. uh, so who hasn't gone for the number four that guy in the uh, brown hi, robe use, sitting over there use, in the corner. Who's person? Who's person? Uh, so since since it's only me left, um, my number four was Damn. red versus blue. <laughs> <laughs> I see how this is. <laughs> so, my, yeah, my number four is red versus blue. Um, just because. Just by because of the way that it's made more than anything else. Like, the stories themselves have gotten pretty sort of raggedy over the years but it's it still runs around it's still done really well like a lot of the visual effects are, are well considering it's uh, based on a game it's are pretty good um, um and on a bit of a sad note for those out there who don't know uh one of the lead guys from it monty um was hospitalized the other day so just hmm. want to take this opportunity to say that we hope he is doing well. Rooster Teeth hasn't announced anything, but last we heard was a couple of days ago he was in critical condition, and they d- didn't know if he would make it. So um, as soon as we know, we'll post something up on the Save Sci-Fi wall. But generous fans of the Rooster Teeth guys have donated over 170000 US dollars to help with his medical bills. So that's really, really good. One day I would love to have a shadow of that many fans to support us. I really yeah. would. Yeah. So. Uh, Monty, honestly, is one of the nicest and coolest guys I've ever had the pleasure of meeting. He yeah. is actually one of the most genuine down to earth people and a really awesome person. I really hope he gets better. Yeah. Yeah. So. Hmm. 
number three. <laughs> Although I still have to do my number four, but I don't think yeah, that's going to happen. Do your number four. I'm just being a tease. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, my number four. I'm not sure if my number four is acceptable or not, so I'll... Because it's a little off-centre. My number four is the Doctor Who um, documentary, An Adventure in Space and Time. Ah, that's the one where it sort of follows the very Chris beginning Stark. of the series. Yes. And all the behind-the-scenes stuff. Yeah, I've seen that. That is actually really good. It is amazing. I, 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 I was intrigued by it, obviously, being a Doctor Who fan. I fell, I absolutely fell in love with it. I think they got um, the cast was perfect for everyone. Yeah, they, they uh, actually used that guy in um, the dude who played the Doctor in that in the fiftieth. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. He did the fifty. Mm. He, he, he was the uh, version of the first. Yeah. Because obviously, hey. Hubble's not alive. Yeah. Hate me all you want, but I could. I can never get behind anything. Thing Doctor Who. I just. I just can't. Yeah. And unfortunately, due to technical issues, Devin has been disconnected. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I love um, Adventure in Space and Time. It, it, um, even though it counts as a uh, TV movie, yeah, I, I, I could not go past it. Like, I, I, I'm a huge Doctor Who fan, but I love that so much. Like, yeah, it, it ex- explained so much for me that I didn't know about it. <laughs> I didn't know that when Doctor Who started, they were in a shoddy shed that had dodgy um, fire um, fire alarms that sell sprinklers. Yeah, like, that's really funny. Yeah, uh, 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 considering what they had at the time and what they've done with it, I'm like, uh, by all rights, it should have died. Like by <laughs> rights, it should have died and disappeared from all of time and space. But somehow, somehow it works. S- yeah, somehow it just had that weird little thing like lack of a better way of putting it, the first couple of Halo games have that weird little thing in them that gets you to play them again and again oh. and again. And Doctor Who has that thing that you can never sort of put your finger on. Even shows like Stargate don't have that sort of thing. It's- See, I can, I can agree with the Halo portion because I absolutely love the storyline for the Halo series and I don't even care much for Xbox. Yeah. But I don't feel that way about Doctor Who. I tried to get into it, and I just couldn't. Yeah. I have to admit, though, it is more of a thing for those countries that have yeah. strong ties to the Brits. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, so it's because I'm American. Yep. Pretty much be racist. <laughs> racist. Yep. <laughs> I'm not racist. I don't give a shit if you're black, yellow, white. Or oi. green. Oi, oi, oi. You just live in America and makes it a bit harder to get into Doctor Who because it's designed for Brits, Australians, and anyone else who's yeah. didn't basically give the Brits the finger when which, they wanted to get away from them. Yeah, which is why Torchwood, which was aimed more at the Americans, died catastrophically. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, uh, moving right along. Where are we up to? Are we up to number three. Number three. Num- three. Yes. Number three. Number three. Oh, number. Oh, three. oh, I should do like the count. Number three. Ah, ah, ah. <laughs> so anyway, don't uh, make me get the shovel. <laughs> <laughs> I got, oh, I got buried ages ago. Yeah. Uh, anyway, my number three is was originally uh, something else, but then I looked at my bookshelf and I saw this and went, "Holy crap! How did I forget?" It is Battlestar Galactica. Which version? The new version. Okay. The, the, the reboot Battlestar Galactica. Um, now, I, I'm the reboot, the the reboot. I, I never actually watched it as it was airing. I watched it all on DVD and Blu-ray after it finished airing. And I must admit, I really enjoyed it. I sort of... I, I It does drag, don't get me wrong. But I still think it's got some of the best space combat you can find in any sci-fi. Oh, definitely, especially with the soundtrack for the series. Oh, yes, yes. I, I love soundtracks in series. I've actually got a lot of the soundtracks from the TV series I watch, and I listen to them when I go to the gym and do that sort of stuff. Um, and Battlestar Galactica, quite a few of them, especially the the Cara Thrace ones, like the battle ones, are definitely the ones that yeah, I like to listen yeah, to. Yeah, definitely. I have the entire uh, Battlestar Galactica soundtrack on yeah. my tablet. Nice. So... Um, getting a little, get going back a little bit 
Uh, what did you think of the Enterprise's intro and outro? Since we're talking a little bit about soundtracks, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't. I think that was actually the yeah. best bloody um, start sequence they came up with for a Star Trek. Yeah, exactly. I felt Ooh. the exact same way. The one for the original series, I just I the muted. Hell? Yeah. Then again, that um, was the original series. I'm way back when with Ripshirt Kirk, so... Okay. Just yeah. so people know, I'm getting a warning on my end that we're running low on bandwidth. I'm not exactly sure what's causing that. Um, but nothing else is on. Uh, just to let you know, if we do drop out, we will be reconnecting as soon as we can. Um, but yeah, at the moment, it seems to be fine. Anyway, uh, let's see. Number three. Let's go with Stuart the News Guy. All right. My number three is it is a animated TV series, and it is not Gundam. It is Star Wars Ewoks. Star what? Shovel. <laughs> so, I don't care. You're getting shoveled on the fourteenth. <laughs> I'm not coming to the. I'm not coming on the fourteenth. It's Valentine's Day. Okay, I'm okay, even better. I'll make it two weeks later. I will uh, bring polished. So Star Wars Ewoks was an animated series. Block oh, that... this person. Click. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is getting expensive. <laughs> Ewoks, for Christ's sake. You better off focusing on Jar Jar Binks. <laughs> no, do not go there. You know what? Do this not was go there. actually pretty good, so I don't care. I enjoyed it as a kid. For those right. who don't know we'll, what this is about. We'll grant it to you because you're a kid and you didn't know any better. Yeah. Do we want to know what this is about? That's a real question. Moving on to Devon. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry for, for, for some reason this podcast is turned into let's all crap on Stuart I, I really feel bad about it just for the record no, you okay, um, I really I have, don't I have, I have two number threes actually I have one that I'm pretty sure counts but I have a backup one just in case um, the one I'm going to be using first was kind of one that we that I was originally going to have my number six as well but we're not going like that. Anyway, uh, my main number three, I'd have to say, is a anime called Knights of Sidonia. That sounds familiar. That's a, I actually like that one, except it got off to a really, really slow start, and they yes, don't have yeah. any fingers to work with at the moment, so it's kind of drawn to an abrupt halt halfway through. Yeah, yeah I, I can agree with that, but... It, Overall, though, from what I what we've seen of it so far, I think it's got a lot of potential. And it does. When it's it does continue, it is a it'll fantastic be really good. show. Once it gets more uh, content to build the episodes from. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, let's see. Who's left to do their number three? I haven't done mine yet. Okay, we'll go with David. I've really got to sort of make a checklist and keep an eye on who said what instead of continuously asking who hasn't done it. <laughs> Most <Yeah>. professional <laughs> podcast in history. All right, my number Ooh, three is actually s- going to be a Devin. backup since we already covered what was already in my number three. Yep, which was Doctor Who. So that was someone else's number four last turn. Um, so I'm going to go with Star Trek Voyager. Star Trek Voyager. Yeah. yeah. I, that I, was actually... The sh- I mean, I watched the original animated series way back when, and it didn't do much for me. Uh, Next Generation, at the time I first saw it, bored me to tears. Don't get me started on the deep-seated hatred for Deep Space Nine, but Voyager got me hooked on Star Trek. Yeah. I, I would Whoa. definitely agree with that. What the hell? Sorry about that, I... I cut out there momentarily. Uh, I got randomly disconnected. Yeah. Um, um, yeah. So anyway, just on a totally random note, only to do with Voyager, one of the guys on um, Safe Sci-Fi, I do plan on having him on. Um, it was the dude we were talking to about the Star Trek letter a couple of weeks ago. Yep. Um, he said that Janeway is definitely a villain. So, somewhere down the road, I don't really want to talk about it, I just want to touch on it. Somewhere down the road, I am definitely going to have him on, and we're definitely going to talk about if Janeway was a villain or not. Ironically, oh, I don't think Janeway was a particularly good captain. Personally, I don't think she her character was suited for the role, for I, the situation I they were putting. I 
Jane at the start, she, she at the yeah. start, Jane Wait was not suited for it. It took her two or three se seasons of it to grow into the captain that Voyager needed, and I actually kind of liked that because at the start she was doing everything very by the bookish, very Starfleetish, and it once it so finally started to sink in that she's going to have to start playing fast and loose with the regs to get the resources that Voyager needs to get home, then she started to grow as a captain. So, Amy... Specifically right around the time that uh, Seven came into it. That was about the time she started to really play fast and loose. Yeah, I'd have to agree with that. Um, and I wouldn't say she was a villain, it's just she had to make tough choices that not really many of the other Starfleet captains that we saw had to make. Yeah. Because she was the on her own. Yeah. The only, uh, only two that have made similar decisions are Archer and Kirk. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, um, I'm. We're going to move along. We'll we'll touch on that when we get him on the the show, and I look forward to that because I think it's actually going to be a decent discussion. Um. So, let's see. Uh, so we've all done our number threes. Yep. Yep. Yes. Okay. Don't let's... worry, my tops are a lot better than my number three, don't worry. Okay, let's move on to number two. We will start with poor little Stuart. Number two, Astro Boy. Astro Boy. Yes, I loved Astro Boy growing up. I'm talking old school Astro Boy, like the old original thing, like soaring high in the sky. Like, I'm not going to sing the whole thing, but... Please and, don't. Uh, my really, where, please don't. Where's my sword? <laughs> uh, well, I have one next to me if it helps. Yeah, just, just, yeah. But no, I, I loved Astro Boy. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I don't know what drew me to it as a kid. Whether being a, uh, uh, he was a robot. And I think it was, it's around my age. I think it was more the fact that it was the only thing decent being shown on TV at the time, unless you counted Sesame Street as a good show. But Sesame Street is the best. I literally I... had nightmares about Cookie Monster coming after me. I'm not even joking. <laughs> <laughs> I was like four, but I just thought, I'm just, just throwing it out there. <laughs> when was the Astro Bo this Astro Boy show out? Again, early eight, early to mid eighties. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so yeah, since nine, so, so since I'm nineties, I missed it. Yeah. Yeah, there's, the recently there was a bit of a remake, kind of but yeah, yeah. yeah. Old, as I said, old school Astro Boy is amazing. A uh, who would win, Astro Boy versus Iron Man? Go, Astro Iron Boy. Man. <laughs> Iron Man. <laughs> and Tony Stark has a suit for every, every everything. everything so. Yeah. Okay. Tony Stark two, is the I've Batman got, of Marvel. I've got two things to say about this. Yep. One, Tony has a bit of everything in his suit. Two. He has an EMP device. Astro Boy is not freaking shielded. Boom, dead. Yeah, uh, okay. Tony gets EMP'd, he just hops out of the suit. Yeah. Well, okay, just so. Serious. Devon, what is your number two? My number two yes. is probably probably one of my most rewatched sci fi's sci fi series is that I've ever watched, which is uh Farscape. Nice, yeah. Um, Gotta pay that. Yeah. Gotta pay that. We went Love into detail with Farscape last yeah. week. I don't think we really need to go back there yet. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just, just, just random note, really quick. I'll, we'll get back to Farscape in like three seconds. Uh, Amy said Sanctuary, and Robert has said Stargate Atlantis, which are both shows we haven't actually touched on. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to, to say that. Yes, I think the, this is. A, I think the Stargate well, thing is a case of. It's on the list, and it's really high up the list for everyone, but yeah. we cover through Stargate so often here, it's probably actually slipped our minds that way. Yeah. So, yeah. anyway, back to Firescape. Almost said Firefly. The only yeah. thing that really sort of got to me about Firescape, and it's, and it's nothing major, they did nothing wrong with it, it was just the puppets. The little fucking frog thing was the thing that uh, got Rigel? to me. Rigel? You didn't like Leave Rigel? Sparky alone. No, I, I, I didn't... <laughs> Rigel as a character is cool, but just the puppet annoyed me. Uh, 
Yeah, I could, I could see how that could be a little irking. Especially in the uh, later seasons when they continuously swap from puppet to CG to puppet to CG to puppet to CG. It's like, <laughs> choose have, one. They kept did breaking have, the budget. <laughs> did you have similar dreams of puppet with Cookie Monster? Is that why you don't like it? <laughs> that I think one of the cool. I think uh, one of the coolest characters besides John is uh, Talon. Yeah. The I the love ship. Talon as a ship. Yeah. Yes. Talon was, was really a cool. Talon was a tank. And just the whole idea of baby for Christ's sake. Yeah. Just the whole idea of living living ships like that is just really cool and the whole series was featured it quite well in my opinion. Yeah. Alright, so, so who hasn't done their number two? Hello. Okay, so anyway, my number two <laughs> I love doing that. My number two is uh, the new Doctor Who from 2005 onwards. It's what really got me into the show. I st- am still slowly slugging through the five million episodes of the previous stuff, um, which I'll admit, get to eventually. Doctor Who does feel like Dragon Ball. Yeah. It just goes... But then again, they did it as a ten-minute miniseries, so yeah. at the same time, that kind of evens out. Yeah. You're I'm... trying to watch it all in the one hit, but if you're watching a ten-minute Doctor Who thing every day, it doesn't quite become as tedious. Yeah. Well, see, the thing that I like about the old Who, that the new Who really doesn't do, it did early on, but it sort of backed away from it later on, was the revolving companions and the sort of the long story, the long sort of story arcs. I would love to see, instead of having one companion or two companions for two or three seasons, I would love to see sort of five different companions in one season but sort of a rolling cast that never happened never happened yeah. no well it did it did in season one and, and to an extent in season two you had Rose who was the main runner the whole way through but you also had Captain Jack come and go you had another guy they picked up in the future come and go um, you had uh, the boyfriend whose name I've totally blanked on Mickey come and go a couple of times even the mum at one point sort of came and went and um looks like they kind of added to it yeah and it was good it sort of it sort of changed the dynamics every time a new sort of companion was on it sort of changed um sort of changed the balance of the show a bit and while I liked the episodes where it was only one companion the ones that had more than one was really really good um and I sort of missed that in the new series I would it's not that I don't like Clara, but I'd love to see more than just Clara on the TARDIS. I'd love to see them stop on yeah. a stop on random alien planet number forty two, pick up a random person, have them on the crew for like two or three episodes, and then they get left behind or they decide to stay on a planet or and have and sort of restart that rolling cast again. On um, the other hand, I know why they're not doing that at the moment. Because they've already used every single actor from the UK in Doctor Who already. No, <laughs> no, not that. Mainly because the last time they had more than one companion in the bloody TARDIS, it became the Amy Pond show. Yeah, but that's more because Amy and Rory Pond. Yeah, Dad okay, enough okay. said the Doctor yeah, became but... a bit part in his own freaking show to those two. Yeah, yeah. but what, what's the lesser of two evils, the Amy and Rory show or the Clara show? He has a point. So. Yeah. Anyway, I, I think I'm saying s- the Clara show, but that could change in the next couple of <laughs> So I anyway. think my stance on Doctor Who has been made pretty clear. Yeah. <laughs> so let's move on to Dave's <laughs> number two. Uh, sorry, Scarecrow's number two. Oh, okay, this is a doozy. Again, we're delving into the deep, dark annals of anime history. Robotech. Oh, yes. I prefer Techno Man. <laughs> Bite as me as. <laughs> Let me guess, another 80s show that I have no chance of knowing what it is. Yeah, it's a uh, anime. Robotech. Yeah. It was yeah. also... also uh, Robotech was three different animes turned into one series. I think I've got all of them on DVD on my shelf over there under my Zoids and Dragon Ball Z and so, other the first assorted part, anime. First Send part them to was, America uh, and I will find them. The first part of <laughs> Robotech is probably the only one that is still a surviving series at this point. Macross. Yeah. 
Ma the Macross part was something like 38, 42 episodes. It was a good chunk of the of the 75 episode series. At least half of it. Yeah. Um, that was... That's continued on in Macross Plus, Macross 7, Macross Frontier, and a couple of offshoot video, uh, PlayStation games as well, just for good measure. With a new series in the Macrossverse coming later this year. Uh, second, se second part of Robotech was called in its original form, The Armies of the Southern Cross. Hmm. Now, while the hover tanks were kind of cool, and the fact they could transform into giant robots, again, kind of cool, it kind of lost the core that, of Macross that made Robotech great. So that that uh, 16, 18 episode series that you can almost skip over. And when I rewatch the show, I regularly skip over the yeah. Southern Cross arc. And then there was arc 3 which they called the new generation, which was originally Genesis Climber Moss, Pater, Moss Peter. Yeah. But, and that did get back to the fully transforming fighters. Different design, but it it kind of brought the series back. Yeah. So, now, we've had a couple of offshoots since then in the Robotech verse, but Robotech is now b Harmony Gold beating a very, very, very dead horse. Yeah. I'm talking so dead it's beyond skeletal. Okay. It's dust. Yeah. Alright, so has everyone done their number two? Which sounds really sus now that I've actually said it. <laughs> <laughs> no, Mario, it'll sound really sus when we have to, we have to all do a number ones. Oh, God. <laughs> Alright, <laughs> so we'll start with the chat room for the number ones, just because they've been patiently sitting there listening to us ramble incoherently. So Robert says his number one is Matrix. Um... Matrix is a movie, not a TV show. Unless you, well, I guess Animatrix does that count? No. Not yeah, I, I think. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That was a one-off anime movie. Yeah, fair point. Okay, so uh, Robert, get back to us with a TV show. <laughs> I know Jody is our yeah. Doctor Who. <laughs> because is, is our new Doctor Who. Because Stargate is too obvious. <laughs> um. So, Amy says her number one is Sanctuary. So, I'd actually like Sanctuary. And for some reason, I know it's sci-fi, but it's never really on my sci-fi list, even though it is. And it's actually quite a good show. I just finished watching it through again. Um, and considering the origins of, of Sanctuary, do you guys know the, the origin story for Sanctuary? Uh... I've got to remember because I've watched Sanctuary now. If I remember correctly, I'm, I mean of the show itself, not the actual storyline in the show. Oh, is in how the show was created? Yes. Or... No. Uh, what happened was Amanda Tapping um, decided she was going to make a web series, a really short web series, and she got in contact with the Stargate guys, and they just and stole well acquired um, so the green screen set temporarily. And filmed the entire first episode, which would be the first episode of the TV show. Originally, was a web series, and they filmed it with full green screen everything, just as a proof of concept. And then all of the backgrounds and everything were later were added in, sort of later on, just to prove that they could get away with it before it was even made into a TV show. And that online series was so popular, it got picked up by Sci-Fi and made into an actual show. And I just think that's really cool. The concept of doing a full CG show at that point was effectively unheard of. They were the first ones to do it. And then so many people have copied. Look at, um, perfect example, Battlestar Galactica Blood and Chrome. The majority yeah. of the stuff shown in that was full CG. Um, and they used all, a lot of the techniques that the Sanctuary guys developed, which was really cool. Um, yeah. And I remember seeing a little bit of Sanctuary. Uh, I don't ever think I saw the whole series, but I would agree that it was really good. Yeah. Um, so, Robert has revised his number one. Um, I'm just going to double-check the list I have in front of me to make sure that he's, um, we're not doubling it up. It's not going to be a double-up. He's the only one to choose Star Trek The Next Generation as his number one. And Star mm. Trek was actually on my list as my number four. And then I remember Doctor Who. 
And <laughs> Red versus Blue got bumped to number four, and Star Trek got the flick. So, poor next gen. Poor, poor next gen. Yep. But I must admit, of the Star Trek that I've seen, I must I do prefer next gen. Um, I've seen half of Voyager, all of the original series, all of Enterprise, and none of Deep Space Nine. So, avoid Deep Space Nine if you want your brain to stay intact. Yeah, you, I've heard like, that. I think st- I next think gen I has a nice parts mix of next of, gen. Nice next gen has a nice mix of politics, exploration, and conflict. To me, Deep Space Nine was nothing but politics. Yeah. It's like yeah, four or five of. different factions on one tiny space station. What can go wrong? Yeah. I mean, there was a little bit of conflict in Deep Space Nine when you got to uh, the Defiant. Yeah. That was the, about it. I heard, I heard it was the, very the war minimal. was pretty it good. Did, the, yeah, but that was five or six seasons down the track. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, um, let's move on to our number ones. Let's start with Dave. Uh, Scarecrow. Scarecrow. <sighs> to anyone who actually knows me, this should not come as a surprise. Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, Son of a to anyone who knows me, it should not be a surprise. Yeah. That's what I was going to go okay. on. I don't... Yeah, I, 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 Amy said Gundam. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care which particular series per se. I have to though admit that right now top on the top three series that I've seen is Double O uh, Zeta and um, then Seed. I don't really count Build Fighters as, as a serious one. Love it to pieces but not really a serious Gundam show so I don't quite count yeah. that. Yeah. Okay. And that was another one that I could never really find my way into was uh, the Gundam series. Is... Yeah. You don't really need to find your way into them. Most of the more recent ones are all pretty much standalone. They don't need to know the entire. I mean, universe. I mean, as in a sense, as in a sense of, I tried watching them and getting into them, but I didn't really enjoy them. And try build, know. try build fighters on YouTube. Yeah. Okay. You might okay. just get into that one. Okay, moving on to Devon's number one. Just because we're starting to run a little bit low on time, and Stuart needs a bit of it for the news, so. No, okay, no. um, my number one was actually going to be uh, Battlestar Galactica, but because that was already mentioned, I decided to change it to something quite a bit older. My number one is Quantum Leap. Oh! oh. oh. Wow. It hit right in the fields. <laughs> oh, yeah, <laughs> that one hit right below the belt. Oh. Yeah, it's been so long since I've watched that. No two The self. whole watch concept that. of it is is great in my opinion and of course Scott Bakula is in it so that's a plus as well and I didn't even really know about it initially uh, a year or so ago I actually was looking for other things Scott Bakula was in besides Enterprise and I stumbled upon it and it was on Netflix and I've watched the entire series a couple times now and I really enjoy it did you also watch Chuck? yes I've seen Chuck Chuck is awesome Yeah. Um, anyway uh, I will let Stuart go next. Alright. Mine was Gundam, so I had to just briefly change something, and then something <laughs> jumped in my head. Okay, so Stuart's already lost. Moving on to my number one. Hey, no! <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, my number one's not a troll. My number one is Zoids. Oh! Yeah, yeah. Damn it, Stuart. <laughs> I hate you. Just just pure hate. I, would lo- I actually have a Blade Liger... Uh, uh, I still have it, I just need to fix it back up. But yeah. I have a red blade liger in my room. I I had... the most kick-ass TV show I had seen in my teens. Okay. I let... wanted a Liger Zero. Okay, let's let's see if I can remember I all like of the ones that I had made. Okay, I had a Zero X, I had a Zero, I had a Panzer, I had a Snyder, I had a Jaeger... Had Blade Liger blue and red. Had Shield Liger. Had the Gustav. Had the Ultrasaurus. Had the Death Sora. Had the Iron Kong. Had the. Did I say? If I, I think I said Gustav already. Um, yeah, said the good stuff. I had half dozen of the different Fuser ones, including the 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 Fire Phoenix. I had the Seismosaurus. I had the Jet Falcon. 
I had the, the zero X. The, yeah, I did, I did the same. Um, three, I had three or four different ver- of the Chimera Zoids that sort of fused to make the dragon and the the other things. Um, yeah, to, just Zoids was huge for me. Like my my mod DB page, Spina Breaker has um, so many of my Zoids AMVs on it it's not funny most of them are shit because I made them when I was like 10 but pst, I don't care they're still there <laughs> okay uh, Devin just real quick you're in the States what time is it there one of the guys in the chat is asking uh, it is 4.47am here right now um, I don't have school right now obviously uh, in my state we got hit by a major snowstorm so that's kind of another reason why I'm here, as I can be here because there's no school for me. So. Lucky bastard. Yes. Hate you. Anyway, um, so I think I'm the only one that hasn't done my number one. Yep. <laughs> now, my number one, for anyone that knows me, knows how obvious this is Stargate SG1. <laughs> So, I did mention earlier it was common. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> uh, yep. Yeah. So I was one. Well, still so into SG One. The the DVD set. I've got all ninety issues of it, including the books. I've worked on four different Stargate mods, um, including one that's still going now. If you have Star Wars Empire at War Force of Corruption, check out Stargate the yes. Pegasus Chronicles. Oh, it's I've seen that. Awesome. Um. So, Robert says it is 10 o'clock in the morning in Germany. It's currently quarter to eight at night in Queensland. So, um, hmm. yeah. And like, I sound sampled. I went through every episode, episode by episode, with an audio editor, stripping the audio and then sound sampling. Almost. Now that's dedication. Oh, yeah. You just. The amount of time I wasted doing that. I, I mean, spent doing that. Yeah, spent. Let's go with that. I I largely grew up with the Stargate series, so I can understand your love of SG-1. Uh, I grew up part in, with SG-1 in much of the same way that I grew up with Voyager, and I continued on to Atlantis and what little of universe there was. So. Well, see, the, the only problem with being... Uh, see, for me, SG-1 was the show I watched with Dad when I was growing up in the lounge room. And that was on Channel 7. And it was on Channel 7 about from 7.30 to 8.30 for the first three or four seasons. And then Channel 7 went a little bit mental and bumped it to 8.30, from 8.30 to 9.30. And um, then a couple of seasons later, they bumped it to 9.30, from 9.30 to 10.30. And then they lost... Then they realised that there's no one watching it anymore because they were airing it literally after the DVDs have come out to give you an idea of how far behind they were. So they moved it again because there was no ratings from 10.30 to 11.30. Shock or a gasp. Nobody was watching it. They moved it to, from from that back even further, from 11.30 to 12.30. Still no one watching yeah. it. The first episode of Atlantis, they were not allowed to release the Atlantis on DVD over here until they'd aired the episodes on Channel 7. They were aired oh, two gosh. years after the States at 1 o'clock oh. in the morning on Channel 7. And Channel 7's oh. like, well, we're not getting ratings. And it's like, it's one o'clock in the morning. The fuck? So, I have so much, I have so much feels for you right now. Yeah. So, Needless to say, I have so much feels Target for you right now, is so. one of the biggest downloaded series in Australia ever. Yeah. It, it, <laughs> Probably. Yeah. Not, not even joking. It, it rivals Game of Thrones in levels of sort of nom-noms. Yeah. Uh, so. But actually, I, I actually watched... Uh, SG-1 with my mom and watched Voyager with my dad. Nice. Okay. I think we started on when Star Trek, Star Trek was actually shown when it was being shown here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, anyway. It was minimum 11.30 at night. <laughs> anyway, we've got about 10-ish minutes left, so guess what, Stuart? It's time for the new, new, new news. And I'll never do that again. Nobody cares about it. Yeah. Make it, make it snappy, son of a yeah. boy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> And go! <laughs> David Tennant to play Kilgrave in Marvel's, aka Jessica Jones. So, this is a really cool story, and for those who don't know Kilgrave, so I'll go into it a little bit. So, David Tennant is officially joining the Marvel Universe. Which he is over the moon about. 
Yes, like, he actually grew up um, with Marvel Comics, so this is really cool. <laughs> so, for those who don't know who Kilgrave is, Kilgrave uh, had was um, how do I explain Kilgrave? He's purple. Well, he he was purple. <laughs> I don't know if they make him purple. <laughs> Uh, he, he sort of was, um, he was involved in, uh, Jessica Jones, uh, past, and so they're gonna bring it, bring her in, uh, bring, uh, him in, sort of, uh, send a shockwave up her back, like, sort of, like, yeah. PTSD, bad memory stuff. Yeah. Next, go! Uh, this one. <laughs> Ghostbusters all-female cast confirmed. And date, and release date as well. Bath, next. <laughs> you know, he beat coming. me to it. I was actually about to make the wrenching sound. It's like next, <laughs> right, upside next. down, upside down. Okay, uh, uh, Kep Kepler triple four, uh, five exoplanets found orbiting eleven billion year old star. Which is really cool because there's only a very small number of stars that can live for that long. Most of them are red dwarfs. Mm. So, oh, how is that all not on my list? Oh, mm. I'm remembering all the good shows now. Anyway, I know. continue. Go next. Um, <laughs> this one's a little. I got one. You go. this, oh, is you my, dude, this is my segment. Stuff you. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, still, it's like I'm the news guy. I had to do <laughs> it. I do all the work. Okay. Back to <laughs> and this is a little controversial. Our fifth Doctor Peter Davison says Time Lord should never be played by a woman. Uh, he says the Doctor should oh, yeah, be played doctor, by a woman. Oh yeah, the Doctor, I should say, should not be played by a woman. Yeah. And, a little controversial. Yeah, and to be perfectly honest and blunt, unless there is a key story element involved in that happening, I don't... I actually agree with him. Um, if they're doing it just to do it, to me Man. that's not worth it. You need to have a proper good story point and proper explanation behind it. Because the Doctor's always been sort of the fathery type figure. He's, yeah. not, he's not the manly man. He's not sort of anything like that. Don't get me wrong. But like the Master, female, I've got relatively no issue with that because he's, an, he's a lunatic. I can, I can, I can so. agree with that, even though I'm not a really a Doctor Who fan. To change a character just to meet some specific requirements or whatever without making the story seem like it fits that is just wrong in my opinion yeah. uh, anyway next go next. now this is really okay. cool 2001 Space Odyssey sequel blasts off in sci-fi yes finally it's 3001 is yeah. the thing that's <laughs> going off how, how original <laughs> so it's, okay. no it's the book 3001 it's what they're basing it on yeah but yeah really happy with that and this is something really cool. Star Wars Battle Pods now in arcades. Oh yes, I want one. Give me I one. I heard about that. Get me. Get Even me. I'd want. Get me. Even I'll get give me. that a go. Yeah. The get only me. downside to it is it's not a free flight simulator. It's a rail. It's a rail shooter. So you yeah. follow a pre-programmed path. That's the only yeah. downside. I would love we to get one and modify it into, say, an Enterprise bridge or a Daedalus oh, bridge. Yes. Or we something actually, like that would be yeah. awesome. You know what I'd do to it? Yep. Macross. SA-43 Hammerhead from Saab. Yeah, that'll yeah. work. We actually have I was going to say uh, Blade Logo from Zoids would be pretty awesome. <laughs> yeah. yeah. N no, you can actually make it a Zoid cockpit from Fusers because they were all kind of standardised. Yeah. It kind of takes well, away that, from it. They actually had that over in Japan. Anyway, uh, anyway, we don't get any of the good stuff. I know. Five minutes, go. Oh, I, I just wanted to quickly say about the Star Wars game. We used to have something a little similar in, um, in Australia, actually. It used to be an arcade game. Yeah. All right, moving on. Heroes Reborn. The show is back. So during the Super Bowl, there was a there was a uh, there was about what a fifteen second little ad about uh, uh, about, about it. Yeah, I, teaser. Yeah. Kind of, yeah, um, I kind of. Links, yeah, links to all these news and and much much more can be found on the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page. Just for those who yeah. um, are trying this to might keep be up. Shocking, but I'm an American that doesn't watch the Super Bowl. Oh, I'm an Australian, and today at work we were forced to watch the Super Bowl at break because one of the Kiwi boys decided that that's what he wanted to watch. Uh, I feel <laughs> no sorry for you. No one's gonna argue with. No 
it's gonna ask, argue with a kiwi. Alright, no. moving on! Sorry. Gotta keep those, gotta keep the canaries happy. Yeah. Anyway, continue. Be nice to the kiwis. Remember, I am half kiwi. Or I'll... that don't, don't don't make me get the, ki the kiwi out. Meh. Meh. <laughs> right. Now for a bit of a somber note. Uh, former Power Ranger Eric Medina Jr. has a, has been arrested allegedly. This is all allegedly, allegedly for murder. Yeah. I heard so, about this. Yeah. So what yeah. Ha what had happened? Is that, uh, oh, according to law enforcement, uh, Medina, tr uh, Eric, and his girlfriend retreat to his bedroom, but uh, 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 Sutter, I don't have his first name, forced his way into their bedroom, and then he, and that's when uh, Medina allegedly stabbed him in the in the abdomen with his sword. And Medina then called the co um, called <coughs> them on and waited for the cops. Yeah, uh, I'm not going uh, into this. this. Which <coughs> character was Medina? He was the Red Ranger in Wild Force and Decker in Samurai. Thought so. Yeah. Cole. So, yeah. Yes, Cole. Anyway, next, go. Bam. <laughs> this is really cool. Flash! Gorilla Grodd is coming to Flash. Excellent. We, we saw it in the first episode, we saw the cage, so I was, I was definitely looking forward to it. Yes. But next, bang, go. Uh, next. <laughs> well, you're going to run out of time. Yeah. We are. We've got like two minutes left, yeah. so. No, right, I've only got one more story after. Uh, a couple more stories left. Uh, Star Wars standalone film selects Chris Waite as new screenwriter. Woo! Next. Alright. And. Uh. Oh, yeah! Got it. Some Guardians of the Galaxy news! Oh, Guardians of the Galaxy 2 news. So, there's a bit of a whole thing that came out with James Gunn. He answered a whole bunch of questions about this. Uh, apparently, that. Uh, that baby Groot could just be Groot is is Groot and not Groot's son. He could be dead or it could be Groot's son. We don't know. He's not telling us anything. He's an evil bastard and we hate him. Next, go bang. Yes. Uh, Ronan will not be in Guardians of the Galaxy two. Good. And that uh, Nathan Fillion might come into it somehow. May come into Guardians of the Galaxy two. That would be spectacularly awesome. Yes. He is yeah. sort of like David Tennant, but American. He loves his <laughs> he loves his games. He loves his Marvel, all that sort of stuff. So he'd be drooling at the opportunity. No, we hear me. See the duck come back. <laughs> no, please, for the love of God, no. What's wrong with Howard the Duck? Definitely. Two words. Howard Duck. Yeah. Wow. The doesn't anyway, count. That's the news. That's the news. Um. Oh. Okay. Yes. I had one eye. Yes, you've got I a story. One eye I'd have one I'd like to interject here. Uh, Ridley Scott is supposedly working with uh, Sergo uh, McMahon Gazan on a Halo Night f on a movie called Halo Nightfall. Uh, ah, yes. yes. I'll believe I'll believe a Halo movie comes out when Microsoft rolls over and disintegrates in the pits of hell. Uh, Halo <laughs> Nightfall is actually meant to be a series they're releasing on the Xbox One as part of their new sort of shift. For the Xbox yeah. One console towards a media center type vibe and away from a gaming only console. Yeah. Which it's, it's is one hell of a game. It's meant to be a similar thing that they did with um, Halo 4 when they did the TV series uh, Ford Unto Dawn. Yeah, Ford Unto Dawn was good. Ah. Yeah. I'll uh, still believe it is a proper series when Microsoft falls off the side of the planet. Yeah. Okay. okay. Anyway, uh, I will give Devin a quick chance to shout out his. Uh, Shout out something of his that I've forgotten. Because my brain oh. just died. Because I suck. Um, well, yeah. Uh, just a little quick introduction for me. Uh, my name is Devin. Uh, I'm the founder of the YouTube channel Gaming in Progress. And I came on here because I'm a long-time follower of Save Sci-Fi. And it's been really great to be on here with you guys. And I appreciate you bringing me on. Yeah. That's yeah, good. We love having a sort of a random fourth person. Keeps us on our toes. So, I should have really let you do your intro at the beginning, but, man, nah, doing it at the end's better late than never. Yeah. Okay, anyway, time for the goodbyes. So, uh, let's start with the Stuart. Bye! Love you, honey. He doesn't. He lies. <laughs> you should hear what he says. No. Oi! <laughs> oh, I'm joking, I'm joking. I'm just being a mean bastard because I can <laughs> um, so remember to check out the Save Sci-Fi Facebook page um, all the news gets posted up there as we get it we're still doing the ultimate sci-fi movie starting in a couple of days time is actually the quarterfinals so 
getting really close to the end of that. The ultimate sci-fi enemy ship is almost done, and we've got three seconds, so... Bye, guys. Bye. Have, Have fun. Uh, have a beautiful time. <laughs>